Hello all and welcome back to another wonderful video. Today I'm here with ChatGPT and that's because we're going to be taking a look at it, sending it some images of some of my characters that I've made in Ponytown and asking it to rate it 1 through 10 uh, and also kind of maybe roast it or something. We're just going to have some fun with this because I haven't really got to play around with this before and I would love to see uh, what this says. We're going to start with Sugar Cloud here and work our way up to uh, other characters like Birthmark and, and uh, Skela and things like that and just see what happens. So rate this character 1 through 10 and explain your rating. ChatGPT, I'd rate this pixel art character a 7 out of 10. Whoa! Holy cow, we got a 7 out of 10. I really expected it to be like really low ratings for all of these. Let's see. Design, the character has a pleasing color palette. That is true. Uh, with soft pink and darker brown shades that create a nice contrast. The white stripes in the hair add and uh, tail add a touch of uniqueness. Detail, the use of pixel art to create expression, green eyes, uh, and a charming expression is effective. The shading on the body and hair adds depth. Not really that much shading, if we're being honest with ourselves, but anyway, especially for a pixel art style. Style, the character seems inspired by My Little Pony or some similar art style, and it stays true to that aesthetic which many people find endearing. Room for improvement, all right, more texture or subtle details on the body, uh, like, accessories or extra markings could enhance the personality and make the design stand out even more overall it's well made cute pixel pony design so that is a kind of a fun thing too um sugar cloud actually does technically have like more detail in her because she has like white spots basically everywhere more prominent around like the face and neck and stuff like that but technically there's some in the legs and things like that but ponytown doesn't really offer that as an option but still interesting nonetheless all right, it's Birthmark's turn. Let's see what they rate Birthmark. Let's throw him out there and see what they say. Now, he's technically supposed to have a second horn, so that's kind of a whole thing. Wow, he's even better than, than Sugar Cloud. Amazing. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's the reasoning? Design. The black and white color scheme, complemented by a striking purple, creates a bold, clean contrast. The green eyes stand out nicely against the darker colors, making the face visually engaging. I, I never really would have thought of something like that. Anyway, the details. The character has more distinguishing features compared to the first one, especially with the inclusion of the black hoodie. I'm surprised they knew that was a black hoodie. Uh, anyway, uh, the black patches on the hind leg. Very interesting. They thought that that was a black patch and not a cutie mark. Fair enough. Uh, these elements give the character a more distinctive and edgy look. Fair enough, I suppose. Not really that edgy, I guess. I, w I, I wouldn't I wouldn't use the word edgy with, with Birthmark. Maybe with Skella, but Birthmark... Nah. Anyway, the mix of a unicorn horn and casual clothing adds some personality, giving a modern, slightly rebellious vibe while still fitting into the general My Little Pony style. Again, they're like basically... Even ChatGPT thinks Birthmark is like an emo boy or something. Anyway, the, the uniqueness, the dark purple and black hoodie is a great touch that adds an extra layer of individuality. The character seems to have a more defined identity, possibly leaning towards a more cool or mysterious archetype. I guess... I mean, not really, but you do you, chat GPT. The design is visually strong, and the clothing and color palette makes it stand out. To push it further, adding a few more details or accessories could elevate its uniqueness even more. Again, I feel like it's probably going to say something like this at the end of every single one of these. But let's see what they say about Skella. Okay, I'm I'm very curious because because this one has a plushie on its head. What it will say about the plushie? Almost certainly, it'll reference it some at some point, right? Let's see what they say about Skella. Again, she has the plushie on her head, so it almost certainly is gonna. It's struggling with that nine out of ten. Whoa, what the heck? Skella gets a nine out of ten. Why does Skella get a nine out of ten and Birthmark get an eight, and this one get a seven? If I just throw in a random OC after this, will it give me a ten? Is that is that gonna is that is that what's gonna happen? Is it just going up? for some reason. Anyway, let's see. Design. The character's bold green color makes an immediate impact and feels vibrant and playful. The messy punk style mane and sharp expression gives the character a lot of attitude. Very accurate, I actually, I would say. Uh, there are a lot of interesting details here that make the character stand out, such as the red scar-like marks, the red eyes. Their eyes are not red. What the hell? <laughs> Are you getting red eyes? I guess because they have red spots on their face. They just assume they're red eyes. The small plush toy on top of its head, adding to that playfulness uh, that the uh, that it was mentioning earlier. The shoes. Wow, I think those are shoes. Hilarious. Uh, add a quirky touch in the overall design is packed with personality. Creativity. The character feels unique and full of life. The plush companion adds extra charm and hints at a playful, possibly mischievous side. The use of color, especially the green body with contrasting blue eyes and accessories, create a striking look. And the personality... 
the slightly chaotic vibe with messy hair, scars, and the plush give the character a fun and wild energy. It's a memorable design that feels a bit more complex and layered compared to the previous ones. The character's vivid design and energetic appearance make it appealing, and the small details give it extra flair. The only reason it doesn't get a perfect score of 10 is that it could benefit from even more context or storytelling through the design elements. Very interesting. They, they, they even wanted to give it 10 out of 10, but there needs to be more story within its um, character design. I don't really know where I would throw that in at for Skella here. I mean, I have an entire book about Skella and Birthmark. I'm surprised it didn't mention that the plushie... Uh, I, I, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, hang on a second. It even knew it was a pl plushie. That's kind of interesting too. I guess that says more about uh, Ponytown's art style and how good they are with their art that ChatGPT was able to recognize that that was a plushie and not just like a, a, a child or like a baby or something else, right? But yeah, it called it, it called it a plushie. That's interesting. Anyway, I'm surprised it didn't make the connection that this looked similar to the previous entry, because I mean, that is supposed to be birthmark and that's kind of, they look similar. I'm surprised it didn't make that connection there. Either way, very interesting uh, elements here. Let me know what you guys think of this in the comments below. But now I want to see what it would say if I wanted it to roast all the characters. I'm going to just ask it instead of just sending in all the images at once and just ask it to roast all of them. All right, let's break these characters down. Oh, God. All right, here we go. Character one, the cotton candy special design. Pink body, brown mane, and with white stripes? Looks like someone took a scoop of Neapolitan ice cream and stuck it on a pony. Are you a dessert? or a horse <laughs> oh man i love that that's actually pretty accurate uh, expression the smug little grin says i know i'm cute but honey you're giving off major i just raised my mom's makeup stash and nailed it not vibes <laughs> damn bro eyes those green eyes they're looking like they're trying really hard to hide the fact that you missed the memo and not going full pastel in public <laughs> Ooh, goodness gracious. All right, and then we get the edgy goth pony with a hoodie. Again, I don't know why, where they're getting the, the, the edgy part of, of him or like the goth part of him. I guess it's because he has a hoodie, but that, uh, hoodies don't equal goth. Anyway, oh, a purple and black combo? How original. You're like every teenager who discovered their local Hot Topic and can't decide between goth and emo. A hoodie on a pony? Really? Are you cold? What are you hiding under there? Are you secretly a horse on the run from the fashion police? Funny, because Birthmark technically is on the run. Not from the fashion police, but he's technically on the run. Uh, anyway, eyes. Green eyes with that palette? Looking like you spent way too long perfecting your brooding don't talk to me look. But let's be real. Underneath that hoodie, you're probably still watching cartoons. What's wrong with watching cartoons? Oh god, the radioactive chaos. Oh my goodness. This pony looks like it fell into a vat of highlighter ink. Neon green all over? You're blinding people on sight. Subtly is overrated, huh? A plush toy on your head? What, did you run out of room in your toy chest? Did your owner forget how to accessorize? And what about those shoes? Rollerblades? Because this whole design is sliding downhill fast. And that messy hair is the definition of, I woke up like this, but I'm getting more I didn't sleep at all, and I'm definitely up to something chaotic vibes. Damn, okay, all right. Uh, they weren't super, they, they was weren't the worst roast ever. Actually, I've, I've honestly genuinely heard every single one of these things that ChatGPT just told to me from real life people, which is kind of a funny thing to think about. Everything except the rollerblades and the shoes. I don't know why ChatGPT thinks that these uh, things on her legs are rollerblades or shoes. I guess because they're really low, and so it just gets confused there or something. I don't really, I don't really know. I would have thought it would have been able to recognize a bracelet or something. Upgrade to ChatGPT or try again tomorrow. What? I can't send it more images. No. Oh, come on. Just one more. Just one more. <laughs> Uh, I, I definitely recommend trying this out. It's You're not gonna get like really helpful advice or anything like that, but if you have a character that you made in Ponytown, uh, put it on here and ask ChatGPT to rate it out of 10 or something and see what it says. And if you get a 10 out of 10, please do send it to me, show it to me somewhere. Uh, you can you can uh, send it to me on Discord at Danny Ball Sub, or you can uh, post it on the post it on the, the subreddit or something like that, on the uh, Ponytown subreddit or something, and then we'll, we'll take a look at that or something. All right, I'm gonna ask it to create a story using all three characters I sent. What the fuck? How did it know its name? Oh, shit. It probably knew its name because 
the file that I sent had the name in the file. So like that's a, a, a skeleton standing or something like that and etc. etc. So that's probably how it knew its names, but that's crazy. It knew it knew the names. It's, I guess it was reading the file of, of the thing. That's crazy to think about. Once upon a time in the magical land of Ponytown, there were three unlikely friends. Sugar Cloud, a sweet but secretly sassy pony. Feels accurate, I guess. Birthmark, a moody and mysterious unicorn. And Skella Bones, a chaotic bundle of energy who never knew when to quit. Sugar Cloud, with her soft pink fur and candy striped mane, looked like the perfect picture of innocence until you get to know her, that is. Behind that sweet exterior was a pony who could roast you with one sentence and trot away with a, without a second thought. Birthmark, on the other hoof, was the brooding type. He wore his black hoodie no matter the weather, and rumors swirled that he was hiding something underneath it. Maybe it was a secret cutie mark, maybe it was a collection of emo poetry. No one really knew because Birthmark kept to himself, except for when he hung out with the other two. And then there was Skella Bones, a neon green disaster on legs. Okay, look, I didn't ask you to roast them. I told you to, I told you to like make a, make a story with them. With her scuffy mane, random patches, and a plush toy always perched on her head, Skella was like a walking party that no one could control. She thrived on chaos and was always up for anything that promised trouble. One sunny afternoon, Sugar Cloud was prancing around Ponytown, basking in the compliments passerby about how cute she was, but deep down, she was tired of being the pony everyone thought was just a pretty face. She wanted some excitement, something wild to shake things up. That's when she ran into Birthmark and Skella Bones. Hey, Birthmark, Sugar Cloud called, trotting over to the unicorn, who was sitting under a tree, brooding as usual. Still hiding in that hoodie of yours? You know it's like 80 degrees out, right? Birthmark gave her a long stare from under his purple bangs. I'm fine, he said, his voice dripping with disinterest. What do you want? Ugh, lighten up. We're going on an adventure, Sugar Cloud said with a sly grin. An adventure? Skullabone suddenly appeared, seemingly out of nowhere. She was riding a skateboard because of course she was. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? What do you mean she was riding a skateboard because of course she was? Where did the, where the fuck did that come from? What the hell? I'm in. What are we doing? Robbing a bakery? Sneaking into a dragon's lair? Sugar Cloud laughed. Nothing that extreme, but I've heard rumors about the Forbidden Forest at the edge of Ponytown. Apparently, it's haunted. Birthmark raised an eyebrow. Haunted? You don't believe that nonsense, do you? Who cares if it's true or not? It sounds like fun! Skella Bones shouted, already hyped at the thought of something wild happening. Plus, if it's haunted, maybe we'll see a ghost pony or fight some evil spirits. That'd be awesome. Birthmark sighed. Fine, but I'm not responsible if you two get spooked. The trio made their way to the Forbidden Forest, which loomed just beyond the safety of Ponytown. As they approached the entrance, the trees seemed to close in around them, their twisted branches casting eerie shadows on the ground. The air felt cooler, and a mist began to swirl around their hooves. Spooky, Skella said with an excited grin. I love it. They're doing kind of an okay job with Skella, at least. I mean, they, they did the, the, the whole thing of, like, who cares if it's haunted or not? It sounds like fun. That feels like kind of a Skella thing. I don't think she would be scared of, like, a haunting or anything. Uh, I loved how she was, like, wanting to rob a bakery and everything. That was kind of funny. That was kind of into Skella. Anyway... As they ventured deeper into the forest, strange noises filled the air, rustling leaves, distant howls, and the occasional eerie whisper. Sugar Cloud, normally so confident, found herself inching closer to Birthmark, who rolled his eyes but didn't say anything. Are they going to ship those two characters? It's the other way around. It's supposed to be Birthmark and Skella. Anyway, after what felt like hours of wandering, they came upon a large, crumbling castle hidden deep within the trees. Whoa, Skella said with her eyes wide with excitement. This is perfect. Let's explore. I don't know about this, Sugar Cloud muttered, eyeing the castle nervously. Her usual bravado was starting to fade. Oh, come on, Sugar Cloud. Where's that sass now? Skella teased, nudging her with a hoof. Before Sugar Cloud could respond, Birthmark pushed open the heavy, creaking door to the castle. Uh, the inside was dark and dusty, cobwebs hanging from every corner. As they stepped inside, a cold wind blew through the hallway, and they could hear distant footsteps echoing off the walls. Maybe we should turn back, Birthmark said, glancing around wearily. This place gives me the creeps. But Skella was already charging ahead, fearless as ever. No way, we didn't come all this way just to chicken out. Let's see what's up there. She pointed to a grand staircase that led to the upper floors. Reluctantly, Sugar Cloud and Birthmark followed her up the stairs. As they reached the top, they found themselves in a long hallway lined with portraits of old, stern-looking ponies. Suddenly, one of the portraits moved. Sugar Cloud screamed, jumping into Birthmark's side, causing him to stumble. Did you see that? The portrait just blinked! I saw it, Birthmark said, his voice calm but tense. Let's not stick around to find out why. 
But before they could turn back, their door at the end of the hallway slammed shut on its own. Skella, instead of being freaked out, was thrilled. Yes! Haunted castle action! Let's go check it out! They cautiously made their way toward the door, and as they got closer, it slowly creaked open. Inside was a massive room filled with ancient books, strange potions, and mystical symbols etched into the floor. At the center of the room stood a tall, shadowy figure. Sugar Cloud's eyes widened. What is that? The figure turned towards them, revealing itself to be a spectral pony, its body flickering like smoke. Who dares to enter my domain? It boomed, its voice echoing through the castle. Skella Bones, never one to be intimidated, stepped forward. We do! We're here for some adventure! You got any spooky challenges for us? The ghost pony blinked, clearly taken aback by Skella's boldness. You... you're not afraid of me? Nah, Skella shrugged. I've seen scarier things in the mirror. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Roasting herself there. Uh, the ghost let out a long, exasperated sigh. Fine. If you three are so eager for adventure, I'll give you one. But be warned, it may not end the way you expect. And with that, the room began to swirl with magical energy, pulling the trio into their next chaotic misadventure, full of puzzles, tricks, and challenges only a ghostly spirit could dream up. The moral of the story is that when you throw a sassy pony, a brooding unicorn, and a neon green chaos machine into a haunted castle, nothing goes as planned, but that's half the fun. I don't really think that that was the moral of the story, ChatGPT. I don't even know if there was a moral to the story. It's crazy. It's crazy to think like that was actually better than I expected it. It was much longer than I expected. I know I've done stuff like this before with ChatGPT, and usually the stories or whatever it does is usually way shorter than this. I don't like how it starts with Once Upon a Time. Honestly, this entire first section is not super great. I think it doesn't get good until they actually meet each other. Everything before that feels really weird and everything, but of course, it's going to be weird. It's ChatGPT. It's AI. It's not good at writing stuff, and it never will be um, good at writing stuff. Or at the very least, it'll never be good enough to replace a person writing something or coming up with something. And it does kind of make me want to write a story about, like, Skella and Birthmark going on an adventure into a haunted castle or something. That might be fun. Let me know if you guys want to see that. But for now, I think that's going to do it for this video. We had a lot of fun with ChatGPT here. Here. And like I said before, try to see if you can get a 10 out of 10 on the rating for the uh, ChatGPT. This is the true rating line experience right here. If you can get a 10 out of 10, I don't know, the first person who can who can make it get a 10 out of 10 or something like that. Maybe you get something special. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Maybe I'll just shout you out in a community post or something. Uh, either way, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and doing all of those wonderful things like that. Because when you do wonderful things like that, not only to get access to wonderful content such as this, but you always get to become wonderful yourself. And I think we all want that. So do those wonderful things, and until next time, stay wonderful.